right, and we are back for another episode of the Grunge Bible Podcast. I'm here to cut you in, Chris. Oh, yeah. Because you ain't no part-time friend. <laughs> yeah, I was going to as... say, there, there, there are no part-time friends around the Grunge Bible Podcast, especially this far in. This is episode 57. Um, if you're with us, uh, you're a full-time friend. Hell, yeah. Um, I was thinking about the number 57, Chris. Do you know, off the top of your head, do you know why it's special? It, I know Heinz 57 ketchup, right? <sighs> Uh, yeah, That's not, yeah, I guess well, I, so. <laughs> that's probably not what we were thinking. What else about 57 is there that's significant? I mean, it's one of, I actually forget how the math term goes, but 3 by 19 equals 57, and 19 doesn't have, it's like the, that's the least common, or 57, the least common multiple. It's 20 is 3 and 29. I don't know. Math Did, was never our strong suit. 57 like one, was all that was my PR come, in the hammer throw. 57. 50. Oh, there you so, go. That's, so that's we're, better. We're celebrating mediocrity this week on the Grunge Bible podcast. Yeah, at least common multiple. I think that I don't know. Someone will correct us hopefully. But yeah, please uh, correct us. But we're happy. This is um dude, we're getting ahead. So we're actually recording this not long after we recorded our um, our Jerry Kentrell yeah, episode. I, f- so. I feel kind of fraudulent, so I just need to I need to let everybody know. So this episode's coming out on Monday, the 25th of April. We're recording this on the 13th of April, so we are far and away ahead of the world here. So uh, yeah. hello to everyone in the future. I hope I hope the end of April is finding you well. Um, I hope it's finding you as well as we are right now in the middle of April. How, how are you doing yeah. today, Ethan? I'm doing well. Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, my body feels good. Um, the spirits have been high. Yeah. Um, I got some coffee. So yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing really well, Chris. How are you? Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling well rested for once. Um, oh, yeah, we're, just, <laughs> we're slamming them tonight. I'll tell you. Um, yeah, things are good. Things are, things are quite good. So I have, I have nothing to complain about. I have nothing to go on a tangent about, uh, and I'm really excited for a good episode. Heck yeah. And we do have a good episode. We have, we're going to do a little bit. Of, of me and Chris kind of bouncing off some ideas in the beginning, and then we actually have an awesome another guest coming in, a friend that we made along the way that we will um, introduce later, I guess. Before yeah, absolutely. We have so, some... so, so briefly, uh, yeah, we'll, we're going to get into it with uh, Nick Brumbaugh, otherwise known as Faded Trade on Instagram. He is a he's become a friend of ours over the last couple of years, and he is a uh, collector, buyer, seller, and just fan of vintage merchandise, vintage tapes, records, what have you from the era. Uh, he's a little bit older than us, but uh, a, a great fan of grunge, a great fan of music, and a good friend of ours. And we're, we're happy to talk to him today about, um, you know, different, different things relating to the merch field and, and what it's like to, to search and to collect and to thrift and all those things. I think it's super cool. Uh, it's certainly nothing that I really knew much about, so it was a lot of fun to talk with uh, with Mr. Brumbaugh about all of those things. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember he um, he just was a fan of the page and you know swiped up on a few things. But more spe- most specifically, I remember him. He was reading out of it looked like it was like um, a music book for it's like a hymnal almost. It was like a hymnal of Alice in Chains and like I I think it had to have the um, the writings like the notes like if you were to sing it like yeah like you could yeah. see. Yeah, and, and it, it had and the it had music for it. Yeah. For, for Wood. And mm-hmm. it was... The Book of such Alice. A, yeah, the Book of Alice. And he did like this small, like, you know, talk in the beginning. And then he broke out and... It, it, was, basi- it, was, it so- was basically an Instagram reel before yes. Instagram reels were a thing. So he was a pioneer. I think so, too. Yeah. And he's yeah. always... He's just great. Yeah. He's super fun to talk to and just, uh, you know, has a, he's a tastemaker. I mean, yeah, he totally comes, is. Yeah, re- really, really, really good, to. good guy. Uh, so we we sat down with him back actually on March sixteenth. So uh, we're getting that out there this week. We think it's a good time to uh, good time to share this conversation. So uh, you know, as as we sit here, we're able to have these conversations and we're able to talk about music and talk about the bands and the musicians that we love. Thanks to everybody's support, specifically thanks to the support of our top level patrons who are keeping this show running. Uh, we're still on the tracks, uh, just about a month into, uh, to year two of the podcast. And, uh, we definitely, uh, we owe it, uh, largely due to our top level patrons. Yeah. They make it, they make it easy on us. They make it fun. Um, yeah, it's always good yeah, to, they always certainly good do. to. So as, as we do every week on the grunge Bible podcast, it is time to say their names. 
Uh, so this week, at, uh, well, at, at the time of this recording, our top level patrons list consists of the following high quality individuals who support what we do here. And they are Darian Riddle, Brenda, Alex Long, Captain Hightop, Black Hole Sean, Chris LSMS, Laura Nyreen, Nikki Six, Shannon Gorgon, Sue, Sonny Mashburn, Marianne, Kayla Jean, Millie, Alexis Shannon, Jamie Lynn, our number one fan from Australia, What the Fuck's Up Denny's, Release, Rachel Corning, Fuck Soup, Doug Endy, Jade Mercado, Wayne Staley, Victor Schaefer, Kara Kay, The Blue Owl, and my mother, Carlene Salona. Let's go. <laughs> so Ma- Mama C has made the jump. She is a top-level patron, and uh, I'm here to share it with the world. That's awesome. Does she? So she? Does she actively listen? No, to you? no, she doesn't okay. listen. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's just. Uh, I, I, like I said, we've said this many times. I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad none of our parents really listen. Uh, our family members don't really listen either. But uh, she's, she's a. Uh, I get. Well, she's like the equivalent of like a silent shareholder, an- I guess. In a angel company. investor. Exactly. An angel investor. <laughs> exactly. She's, a, she's a, she's a fledgling <laughs> podcast venture capitalist, I guess. Yeah, we need them too. So yeah, so so thank you, mom. I know you're not yeah. listening, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's amazing. Oh man, that's good. That's fantastic. So so yeah. So we're sitting is, here, Ethan, and um, yeah. lately we've we've been listening. We're going through a little bit of a renaissance. We're listening to a lot more grunge lately, and yeah. it feels it feels good again. It feels good to listen to this stuff again, and and it hasn't been that way for a little while. Yeah. And if you're if you're a new time listener, if you're just learning our personalities, uh, we've we go we ebb and flow, of course, with our musical taste, and and like the long time listeners know what we're talking about because we've aired it a few times. But yeah, sometimes you listen to a lot of grunge, sometimes you don't. And uh, right now we're listening to a ton, and I think that's I mean has largely to do with your um, you going to see Jerry live. Yeah, I know. I am. I of course we're, I haven't. We said we were gonna know the next podcast if I had seen him or not, but we turns don't. Out because we're it's, we won't it turns know. out we're liars. We won't know. Turns Yeah. So, but I, I was looking at tickets today, and I'm most definitely gonna go to the Ryman and see Jerry this 100%. week. So I'm doing my research as well and listening a ton more yeah. than usual. Um, yeah, dude, it's it's pretty great. I don't know. Uh, have you been any anybody else? Have you just been in Alice in Chains recently, or what? Where yeah, have you been? So I've. It was definitely in anticipation of seeing Jerry, and then my unbelievably positive experience seeing that show uh, has definitely got me in an Alice in Chains mood. And this is probably the deepest and most singular Alice in Chains period I've ever gone through in my life. They've never really been a band that I've chosen as I'm only going to listen to them right now. I've done that a little bit with Jerry's solo stuff, but never Jerry's solo stuff and Alice at the same time and never really Alice in Chains. And it's really, um, really, really impressive. Aside from that, um, I, you know, I'm still still mourning the loss of Mark Lanigan. And while I wouldn't categorize any of his solo stuff as being grunge, I have listened to a little bit of the trees stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, otherwise, you know, just with lifting and whatnot, I've been listening to, I have some nineties playlists with a lot of what you would consider to be grunge rock on there. So I've been listening to a lot, but it's funny because um, you listen to a lot of it for a while and then you get sick of it. But for us, it's always a presence in our lives because we run the page and there's times where you have to post something and you're not really listening to it. So you're like, wow, like when am I ever going to enjoy this? <laughs> when am I ever going to enjoy this stuff again? And then just like that, it pops up and you're starting to enjoy it again. And a song like sea of sorrow by Alice in Chains, which you've heard hundreds of times, it feels new and it, it, it kind of reignites your spirit for the music and for the era. So that's, that's firmly the zone that I'm in. What about you? Have, have there been any particular bands or songs or anything like that that have kind of started this process again for you riding this wave? Yeah, I've definitely listened to a ton of Alice in Chains um, through our conversation. It's, and I listened to a ton of, you know, not necessarily, you know, grunge, but the Foo Fighters, a lot of Dave Grohl and listeners, yeah. a lot of Taylor Hawkins for similar reasons you were just saying. Mm-hmm. Um, and just and again off of off of those playlists there's a lot of um you know other other acts and whatnot like i feel like i've been listening to meat puppets and dinosaur jr a lot totally um and you know not like they don't maybe fit the exact you know five bands that people are thinking of but um our music interests do go like if we wanted to like or if 
Like there's times where you just don't listen to any rock and roll all day. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, I, yeah, I, I just be got honest. out of one of those one of those phases where I really wasn't. And listening that's fine. To any rock. Yeah. And that's totally fine. that doesn't take the that doesn't take the rock out of me. I will say no, that. Exactly. But you know, it's you know, foundational. You know, what I found interesting though. So I'm like listening. Yeah, we're listening to Jerry and we're talking about him. And like when you're in these moments, you're just like the opinion. And we talk about this a lot when people ask who the best bands are, who the best singers. Like right now, I think Allison Chains is the best out of all four. Oh yeah, you know? I think the best <laughs> guitarist is Jerry yeah. Cantrell. Like even, the, the even amongst the greats of the '60s and '70s, like you give me Jerry up against anybody, <laughs> I'm like, taking dude, Jerry. Yeah, like how can you how can you beat these riffs and the way yeah. that he like everything is like perfect right now yeah. for it. And I love getting into those mindsets where you're like, I could argue. I could argue anybody right now that like yeah. you know McCready and and these guys have Kim have nothing on Jerry. Yeah. And, and it's so <laughs> funny too that you say that because I vividly remember last fall, maybe August or September, when we, were in we had this exact same conversation about Soundgarden. <laughs> we're like, yeah. I'll take Soundgarden against the world. You send me our, be- you send me your best. I'm putting Kim and the boys and Chris up there, and they're gonna yeah. knock them down. Um, it, it it's does so funny matter. though how that yeah. ebbs and flows, and and that's why. Um, I think we we shy away from answering that question because it always changes and there yeah. really there's no objective answer. It's all subjective. Like right now for me, Alice in Chains are the the best band in the world. Um whereas if you asked me 3 weeks ago, I wouldn't have even I wouldn't have even really thought of them in that conversation. But it's it's a great feeling to as a music fan and as as people who listen to a lot of music throughout their day. It's a great feeling of you wake up in the morning and you know you know where you're going to go for your music and you know yeah. it's going to be inspiring. I hate those periods where nothing's really doing it for you and you kind of have to search a little bit, which is super uh, lazy of me to say because that's when you find the best stuff usually when you have to search. But it's great because you, you wake up like I, I'm, I'm going to go lift here in a little bit and I, I already know I'm putting facelift on and I'm going to crush a lift and it's going to be great. And yeah. then I'm going to on my way home, I'm going to listen to Between by Jerry Cantrell and cut yeah. you in and it's going to be great, you know? Dude, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. When you wake up and you have intentional desires to listen to something, it mm-hmm. makes it that much better. And I have been caught. I hate getting caught searching. Um, yeah, it really. Like you it try, really, you try some different playlists. You try some different artists. And because what it you, does, you listen, but it doesn't. Yeah, it, it definitely like takes away from whatever else you're doing. Like if I'm trying to get work done and I'm trying to find and I don't know what I want to listen to, like all I can do is think about like the music. Like, ah, this isn't doing it for me. This it doesn't feel doing right. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, what do you think? Um, now that we're in this, we're we're kind of in in another grunge renaissance for the two of us, at least. Um, you never know how long it's going to last. Obviously, it could last. It could last three months. It could last three days. It could last a week. Who knows? You just enjoy it when you're there. But what do you think the factors are that cause these? these shifts. I think we identified one in the mm-hmm. sense that, you know, I've seen Jerry Cantrell, you're going to see Jerry Cantrell very soon and 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 the feelings that you get from experiences of something like that. But what other factors in your life do you think draw you back to this genre? To this genre specifically yeah. or just anything? Yeah. Yeah, how about how about to grunge? I think that a big a definitely a big thing for me is is when I'm working outside a lot and it gets nice out. So um i feel like i've been outside like last year i had my earbuds in all day and i was listening to failure i was Mm -hmm. listening to um you know the toadies and like you know the whole 90s yeah scene and like it just makes so much sense like i'm hot and sweaty and like i feel like um you know i go in really good spurts and you know when the weather changes start getting nicer out and you can get the uh you know like pop the shirt off to get some sun and you just feel the elements on you Mm -hmm. That's yeah. always a that's always a big thing for me. Um, we've talked about that a lot, of course, on this yeah. the toil. So I think that's really important. And then, yeah, I mean, I know I'm, I'm sure you, we've talked about weightlifting a lot. You're gonna go listen to facelift. I think that um, that is that always gets you in the mood as well. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, I think what you're doing during the day for us being athletes and engaging in different physical pursuits, what type of pursuit that is, or what point in the process you're at. I think informs and dictates what you're going to, what you're going to lean to. I also think the season of, of the year, um, has a lot to do with it as well. Um, additionally, something that I'm thinking about now, obviously with, uh, you know, eyes towards getting into this interview that we did with, uh, with Nick, with faded trade, um, We've been having a lot of really good conversations lately with people who are very passionate about the yes. 90s and these bands. And I think that's stimulated a part of my brain that 
when you when you have these conversations with people, you wanna you wanna go back and you wanna listen, and it just makes you excited about it again. I mean, we've had some really really great conversations with Nick. We've had Amanda and Steve from Bexley. Um, you know, we talked with Andy Engelman about the Jerry Cantrell shows. Um, you know, we were we were texting with Eric Lederman recently as well again, and we're gonna hop on the horn with him soon. And and just on the page, having all of the discourse. Um, because lately I've been sharing things that I'm passionate about and then people will respond and I've been in the comment section. I've been talking to people. I've been direct messaging with people and that, that just makes me a lot more excited about it. And it, it just kind of increases my appetite for the genre. So that, I think that's another huge factor right now that I would huge, be remiss yeah. if I didn't mention. Yeah, it is. It is really big. Um, as far as like, just like the cycle of music and people, I think that you know, seasonal, seasonal music seasons are, you know, they're not all they are is, well, I mean, so I guess weather change, but some, you know, some countries don't even have weather change. So it's just like a calendar thing and whatnot. Right. But, but people and definitely in the U S like we hold, we hold the season change pretty, I don't know, pretty high, pretty significant. And, yeah. um, my music taste changes with the seasons as well. And, um, just like you put away your winter clothes or you put away your summer clothes when the um, the weather temperatures are changing. I feel like I do that with some music. And I was telling you that like two weeks ago, I hadn't listened to Dave Matthews in it seemed like forever. Yeah. And it was a beautiful day out. And like I put it on and like, you know, they're for whatever reason. I mean, they were like one of the earlier bands that I got into and they have an incredible drummer and in Carter Buford. So I've always had a passion. I've always liked that band. Definitely. And um so I've had some good times with Dave. I've seen him and uh, I hadn't, but I hadn't listened to him for like, felt like since the summer and I yeah. threw it on and I was like, Oh my, it was like, I was like, Holy cow. I was like, right we're back. Yeah, I was yeah. like, we are back. <laughs> yeah. And like, I was like, Oh shit. Like this is great. And so I felt like I, you know, yeah, I took the gloves off and it was summertime. So do you feel the same way for the different seasons? Do they have, obviously they, I'm going to say obviously, because I think everybody is the same way. There's music that you listen to in the winter and there's music you listen to in the summer. And then spring and fall are a little bit, you know, maybe harder to distinguish. But I think there's music for each season. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with you. And I also think, weirdly enough, as I've gotten older, um, the seasons and the changing of the seasons and the weather in general has a lot bigger of an impact on my mood than it had before. Like, I, I'm, at the, I'm at a point in my life where I definitely battle with little elements of seasonal depression when the winter time hits. And, and obviously that's going to affect uh, my music listening habits and everything, but Oh, totally. Um, where I live in the United States too. Like we do experience all four of the seasons quite distinctly. I mean, it'll be, it could reach triple digits in the summer and it'll go below zero in the winter time and everywhere in between. Uh, we cover a lot of ground that way. So there's a lot of fluctuation, but I'm the same way. Um, Spring and summer are definitely my two favorite air, two favorite seasons. Um, I'd say summer, then spring, and then then fall, then winter. Winter's last place for me, but um, it's definitely the same thing. I'm starting to listen to some music that I don't really listen to much when it's cold. Um, it's a lot of um, a, a lot of just kind of more upbeat, happier. Maybe some some things that I associate with good memories of the summer, but a lot of stuff from the '60s or '70s or a little bit of the happier alternative things like, like Dave Matthews or whatever. A um, couple of, you know, I'll listen to Bruce Springsteen's born in the USA album. I'll listen to the Joshua tree from U2. Those are just a couple of records that I associate with the summer and being outside and, and making good memories and whatnot. But certainly um, what I listen to in the, in the winter time is far and away different from what I listen to when the weather's nice. And there's just something about being able to go outside hop in your car and drive with the windows down that is conducive to listening to music that is a little bit happier than when you have to wait 20 minutes for your car to warm up and they, you're, you're, you know, the heat's not really working too well and your window's not getting a good seal. So the inside of your window's frosted over and you got to deal with that. And uh, you know, there's, there's a whole lot of different things like that, but I, I am firmly in that boat with you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. The sun plays a huge factor. It's like windows down well, or it's sun, a chemical sun on difference. your back. Yeah. You can sit by the beach. Yeah. It's a chemical difference and definitely like, you know, daylight savings. So the, the days are shorter in the winter and that has an effect um, for sure. So um, do you have it? Like if you had to pick for each, we'll do, we'll, we'll start with the fall. <laughs> we'll go fall, winter, 
spring summer <laughs> if my math is correct <laughs> in reverse order from it's, my least favorite to my favorite how very well, kind of and, you to conform to my power rankings well that's I, yeah <laughs> exactly well that's i'm assuming that's everybody looks forward to the summer for the exact same reason now i'm a big fall fan i would probably my ranking would be like summer i feel like i have the most freedom but like i probably mm-hmm. would go like summer and fall or above spring and winter because okay. spring because winter, you know, winter, it is what it is. But spring's kind of a bitch, dude. Spring, spring kind of like, <laughs> dude, it's like rainy, super windy all the time. Like, it's like, it's like, oh, it's really nice out. But, you know, you're going to get some wind burn and it's, and like, it's, you can't fly a kite. Or actually, you can fly a kite you really well. It's you good kite flying. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's, I was thinking, I was thinking when I throw the javelin and throw a disc, like the wind sucks. But yes, oh, it's, yeah. that's the best kite weather. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, clearly ah, my, my ranking is solely based on my ability to fly a kite because I do that so often. But no, I mean, I, I totally see where you're coming from. But for me, um, I hate the winter at this point. So by the spring, I'm so starved for any semblance of good weather that like I'll take what I can get. And for some reason with the fall, like I really enjoy the fall, but I, I've never really been able to shake that feeling that. You know, it's just it's corner. just gonna be over soon. Winter uh, is coming. Yeah, like it doesn't really matter how good it is. It's just the uh, eventually it's just gonna be over soon. Um, so I I mean, but that's a me problem. Like yeah. I gotta figure well, that. Well, actually, we <laughs> are. Right. Well, see, I like it's just nice because it's usually like I mean I think because my the season usually ends of of winter and being busy and then like football starts. We have our birthdays. That's it's true. It's just like there's just some good things about the it. Fall but, is, the fall is very good. In my, yeah. yeah. So the song, yeah. the two songs that I kind of thought and picked for that, mm-hmm. and I was I was kind of bouncing back and forth where where Jar of Flies might land if it really is a winter album or maybe it maybe like a, it could like be a late fall type thing. Maybe. Yeah, but I think that Don't Follow is like okay a great a great fall song mainly because it's heading into winter. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I just has it just has fall vibes with the guitar and yeah. No, that's then, that's a really good really. Good also pick. put <laughs> River of Deceit as well because I mean, but like those two sound like pretty dark. But it's because winter is around the corner. But I don't know. Mm-hmm. Those are yeah, my fall. Definitely. Those are my fall songs. I, I guess for me, for for things in the fall, I think I associate it more with just kind of the patterns that my life takes. And usually, I spend a lot of the winter, a lot of the summer outside, and I I tend to run in the summer. So in the in the fall, I'm kind of getting back into strength training. So for me, I. I just think of Soundgarden and and maybe something like Searching With My Good Eye Closed or really anything from any of their records from, uh, I guess, Bad Motor Finger, Super Unknown or Down on the Upside. I I, I play those records a lot around that time. Um, And I've I've always kind of associated it with that. Um, You're kind of locking in, you're getting ready. And and, and I try to bring some enthusiasm into the fall and to try to have a lot of it because I need something to sustain myself in the winter, but I, I totally see where you're coming from with yours. It's 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 hard to pick because for me, where I live, half of the autumn feels like summer, and then the other half just feels like winter uh, sometimes. So it, it's hard for me to. I tend to I I, hold, I cling to summer a little too long, and then I put off the arrival of winter. So sometimes I struggle to be cognizant that fall is actually happening. But I would I could see jar of flies fitting in in the fall. You know, the days are getting shorter and. You have to light the candle a little bit earlier in the day each week. Yeah. What about winter? Where where do you fall for winter? Yeah, winter. Um, honestly, I just went like full like sob rock, emo rock, and mm-hmm. kind of I I feel like I kind of leave the grunge era during the winter. I'm not sure like, why. Like Midwest emo type stuff like American yeah. football or yeah yeah stuff like that. Just stuff that you can you know you can scream. Mm-hmm. with your windows closed driving because they're iced <laughs> over you know what i mean like yeah. you, you just so all of them you know the um hot mulligan uh you know american football mm-hmm. sunday day real estate i guess you can go back to and yeah. i mean any, anything like that you know all the stuff that yeah anything like that yeah that anything totally emo makes sense yeah I, I'm I'm actually in a similar vein i listen to a lot of that stuff uh, i listen to a lot of the wonder years around that time as well um modern baseball kind of hits in um so yeah a lot a lot of those different things and i guess as it relates to grunge um i tend to think of alice in chains as a winter band um i think yeah. of not while well, not grunge but he did sing in a band that was grunge but a lot of mark lanigan stuff is just so sad that i i'd end up yeah. gravitating towards it in the winter time um otherwise um in utero to me feels like a like a mm. cold cloudy cloudy day album um 
so that's that's one that gets a lot of play as well um but nice. it's it's it, i think the winner is the hardest for me so i tend to rely on music the most so there's no shortage of options for me yeah um so yeah it's it, there's there's i mean there's, there's so many good things but i, I like what you said there the kind of like with like the emo the emo yeah. oh yeah um, vein because i i definitely i've uh, the older I've been getting, the more I've been spending time in those those yeah. genres, and there's a lot of good stuff there. Oh yeah, I wish you would have been able to experience it on the bus in like sixth and seventh grade. That's <laughs> oh, when you really when fall your problems in love with those. just feel feel massive. Yeah, uh, for the spring, dude, I I think definitely in bloom makes the most sense to me. Okay, uh, for the for the title track. Yeah, in bloom, and also uh, released by Pearl Jam, of course. Yeah, there's there's a good I feel one. Like, I feel like those two fit for i mean like the title and coming out of winter it makes totally. sense and, and they both kind of have that like yeah there's kind of like it's a build a build up you know getting ready for the grand finale yeah yeah i, I like that um i think for me as it relates to the genre this is super counterintuitive because the song the song that i'm kind of thinking of is dying days by the screaming <laughs> trees so lyrically it makes no sense but just the way the music is on that I mean, it opens up with the acoustic guitar, and that song is just a total rocker. Um, it's it's one I've been I've been finding myself here here in the springtime playing a lot more of. Um, but outside of the genre, lately, and and I think having had this experience this spring, I'll always think of them as a spring band from now on. I tend to do that. Um, the front bottoms, you got me in the yeah. front bottoms. This uh, about a month and Absolutely. a half ago, when we were together. And that type of music, uh, but specifically the front bottoms, I've been listening to tons and tons of their music. And I just kind of, um, I don't even know what to call them. I'm not even going to waste my time trying to categorize them. But what, whatever that is, um, kind of feels like spring to me. Oh, um, yeah. Kind of yeah. a little bit of hard driving. It's got some attitude and, and they're singing about some things that matter. And, yeah, yeah, and they're right outside. They're not, they're not like the Midwest punk right. emo scene, but they are. Yeah, I love I love that tweet you sent me. There's there's you're either a front bottoms X or or you are the front or bottoms you are X. the front. Bo- yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Which one are you, Ethan? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I don't know. That's um. I think I've probably been both. Probably been yeah. I've been both. Everybody's been both. That's yeah. That's the crazy part. Everybody's yeah. been both. It's just the way that it works. Um. All right. So this summer, uh, where do you? What made you? Yeah. What summer grunge oh, yeah. song? Am- do you have I am, I am a i am a chameleon when it comes to the summer i i, I but i think as it relates you can to get the away genre, with anything yeah you, yeah, anything you can works. you can anything works in the summer yeah like i i think of for some reason i think of burden in my hand by Soundgarden. i think of yeah. a lot of pearl jams music um, all of all audio slave yeah. yeah like there's just a lot of song like i think of daughter by pearl jam or elderly nice. woman or yeah, um, yeah kind of anything any um the yield album there's a lot you know given to fly all those yesterdays and hiding I, I, a lot of this is informed by the experiences that i had that one summer we we both really got into the genre i was you know working manual labor and i was listening to a lot of this stuff so uh otherwise i mean i'll listen to i'll listen to anything there's a there's a great song by the who called love ain't for keeping um that i heavily associate with the summertime uh, like I said, uh, Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA record uh, is a big summertime one for me. Uh, U2's Where the Streets Have No Name. Yeah, uh, Because of you, also, uh, Dave Matthews' summertime thing for me. Um, yeah. Kind of like that. Um, like more front s- bottoms. <laughs> more front bottoms. Um, a lot of the, uh, what people call like summer hits of the 90s or 2000s, yeah. like Sugar Ray, like those type things. Uh, I love Cannot. that shit in the summer. Lit. Yeah, you know, it's, it's ever clear. Great. Yeah, I, oh, I mean, dude. you can't you can't go wrong in the summertime. And dude, those uh, are my anything. favorite. Yeah, yeah, that's like my one of my favorite types of playlists is the yeah. summer hits of the nineties. And if you can really pair it with like you know a good like tailgate beer or like mm-hmm. you know toes Just in the outside, a nice porch yeah. beer at night or whenever. I, I'm a big fan. I'm hoping to increase my uh my my output of porch beers this summer <laughs> i need to <laughs> yes. i need to take care of that uh real quick because we didn't they didn't come up in the conversation what season would you categorize modest mouse i know we talk about them a lot yeah. on the show they, they're they're everything it's weird because yeah. I, I i listen to them in the summer i listen to them in the fall of uh, the fall a lot i think they're a fall band for me actually the more that i think about it i think that they would have to be yeah fall and fall and spring yeah opposite but the and 
and the front bottoms have a lyric where they say like i you know i enjoy the in-betweens you mm-hmm. know the time it takes the time it takes to get from one place to another like the time in the car and i feel like modest mouse and the front bottoms are that like it's it's the thinking that you have to do in that 45 minute drive yeah. So it's the in between. It's the in between the winters and the summers. So I don't know. I put yeah. modest mouse between the. But yeah, they could be. They could be anything. I mean, I agree. It's it's always really fun to have these conversations, and I think lately, every single time you and I have a conversation or we talk with somebody else, it just I'm getting a lot of just energy from talking about music, and it's really really fun, and it's a good feeling. And that's and that's why we're doing the interviews, man. Yeah, that's, that's why, why we're doing that, the interviews. That's why we 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 said phase two was coming. We're doing interviews, and now we're banging out other opinions, other voices on the pod, and I think it's giving us life, and it's important. Yeah, it, it certainly great. is, and uh, that continues here today with our interview with Nick Brumbaugh, uh, Faded Trade on Instagram. So, what do you say, Ethan? Should we get into it? Heck yeah. If, if we could have the ultimate, um, the ultimate fade in, it would be the dissident guitar, uh, oh, riff yeah. right now. Nice little, we don't have the rights to that. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to write but, to Eddie Vedder stone and I'm, <laughs> see if yeah. they can get us in. Yeah. Yeah. So please enjoy this interview with Nick. Um, I'm sure that he would have got some metal, a metal intro cause he's a metal head, uh, yeah. for sure. So Absolutely. enjoy, enjoy this conversation and, uh, we'll see you after that. everybody so we are here with nick brumbaugh who is a purveyor of all things vintage merchandise in addition to being a very impassioned music fan nick how are you doing i'm doing good man thanks for having me dude if i had to put my finger i think Lederman said it best dude this man's a tastemaker right here oh yeah (laughs) he's just like us man dude he he gets it he's got he's got good taste and he knows how to uh you know he knows how to show it you know and i love that absolutely I'm glad, so, you, I'm glad you said that i was i was uh i was tempted to to go a full mike Patton with the interview and just have a just have a sandwich going but i didn't I, <laughs> when I didn't, the man's hungry man's gotta it. eat <laughs> i didn't do it absolutely we'll, we'll, we'll wait and uh eat after so okay. for the uh yeah i guess for the for the listeners that have no idea who uh who you are why don't you give a little background real quick and just kind of you know plug yourself and just say like yeah what's your deal everybody's got a deal so what's yours cool um I honestly, uh, so I started an Instagram page kind of on a fluke. Uh, one of my friends had been doing that to, um, to the extent where she could kind of quit her job and, and, and stay afloat, just kind of doing that, just selling off of Instagram and, uh, and like pop-ups and stuff like that. So I started doing that too. And then, um, uh, it just, just having an eye, like, I don't know the, uh, the things that attract me or, uh, um, Shirts, or like obviously, yeah. Sh- I mean, shirts, shirts, shirts. And, shirts, and tapes, shirts and tapes, like uh, VHSs and stuff. So I just collect all of that, and then uh, I just was hoarding for a long, long, long time. And uh, I now I slowly kind of let it go a little bit, <laughs> it's little, be little tough. by little. <laughs> yeah, little, little by little. My page is, I mean, things are for sale, kind of, but uh, mostly it's just my hoarding. Yeah, really. I mean, I, I pre- we basically brought you on there because I just want that one shirt of the mushrooms with the uh, the mushroom yeah. shirt with the butterfly on it. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, if it yeah. if it leaves if it leaves my possession, it's going right to you. It's, Hell yeah, uh, it's we'll make a trade. That is yeah, you got some great. Why we're here. He's, he's, I remember you you commented or you followed us like a long time ago. It's a long time ago now. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's you've been in the mix for a long time, and and dude, you got some great finds on your page and just you continually find stuff. I mean, you're like, I'm assuming thrift stores, auctions. I mean, you just get them yeah. wherever you go. And probably, I mean, obviously shows that you went to back, probably back in the day, you probably have a bunch of those, but just awesome. Yeah. Fucking vintage tees. And yeah, um, yeah, how, yeah. How, how, how would you say you got into this? Um, how I really started doing it was just, um, was trying to find tees that I remember people having on when I was young, like those of fashion victims and stuff. You ever seen those? Like the, uh, they're like skeleton designs and they're kind of they have like a witty saying on them or something like that. Like yep. that, or just like, you know, old band tees, like the Nirvana graphics, obviously like, um, all of that pretty much just trying to just anything that, anything that, uh, that I'm like nostalgic for, you know? So, um, and where I'm finding all this stuff is, is 
is very like wide spanning. It'll be at a shop hanging up or something. And I'll bring in a bunch of stuff that I find at the bins and I'll trade up or, and then, you know, throw some cash on it for that shirt or something like that. Or, um, I mean, I was driving to my friend's house and saw a sign for an estate sale. This was like, this was last week. So I, 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 I take the exit and I go and I'm looking through this estate sale. Sorry, this is kind of a lengthy story. Um, I'm looking through this estate sale and there's nothing really there. It was the last day and the family was supposed to be like moving out and everything. It's pit clean. Uh, next door though, there's like this RV and I can see there's like trash piled up and there's clothes just, just kind of just disarray over there. And I asked him, I was like, Hey, can, can I go over there and look? And, um, like the first box that I pulled out was like, you know, sweater, sweater, sweater. And I pulled out a 92, uh, no more tears, Aussie shirt. No shit. It just unreal. Like, uh, the tour I think was a slaughter and ugly kid, Joe. Like so, yeah. so random, but just if I didn't take that exit and I didn't, you know, maybe talk <laughs> yeah. to that guy for as long as I talked to that guy for and notice the trailer, you know, it's, it's all very, 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 um, I don't know, it's really my, it's really mind blowing. Yeah. Like the, uh, some of my best finds have always been like that where it's like, Oh wow. Like I, you know, I talked to that guy for 25 minutes just about life. Yeah. And you know, I didn't pay anything for that Aussie shirt. He's like, what do you got there? Shirt and some jackets. Take it. <laughs> and you yeah, so don't mind if I that's do. Fantastic. Holy you know, shit. so, so it's a little bit more than just going to the racks and like, oh yeah, I found this at Goodwill. Like, you know, I can find some good stuff at Goodwill and at the bins and that kind of stuff. But it's really few and far between. Um, where I really hit is, is, uh, is like talking to people and just yeah. like walking up on a, the odd yard sale and like, you know, having a connection with that person. And, you know, I don't know. It just kind of happens. Yeah. And right. it seems to so, me like there's a big commonality. Like, like I kind of draw my head between the people who are, you know, big time audio files and they'll go to record store after record store searching true. for vintage records. And it's got to yep. feel a lot more fulfilling when you make a connection and you find something that way, as opposed to, you know, going to the mainstream record store or, you know, even searching online for it. And just by that, what you were saying, it's like when you open up a box or you go into somebody's, somebody's place or whatever, like you, you don't have any idea what you're going to find. And that's, that's gotta be oh, no. something that keeps you going back because there's, there's always something out there. For sure. I mean, that's that, honestly, you said it right there. That's, that's, um, it's out there for, it's out there for, for who's looking for it. Mm -hmm. I'll say like, that's, it's like such a, that's a, a really, uh, I don't know. It's kind of profound, I guess, <laughs> you know, it's like if you're, it'll take you as deep as you want to go. If you want to dig through the garbage, you can dig through the garbage and find some cool shit, you know, however, however willing, <laughs> however dirty you're willing to get. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, I, it was literally me. I, uh, I'm at my uncle's house right now in like in Northern California but um okay just visiting and uh, i picked the whole way over and i stopped off at this lady's house she had some she had some stuff she had kind of a yard sale sort of set up on the corner area like by her house and um i went in and i bought so many tapes off of her that she's like what else you got there i had two shirts and i didn't mm -hmm. even really look at see what they were yeah um she's like you, you can have them and it was a, <laughs> a carlos santana shirt it's it yeah. it like okay cool yeah so when stuff. you <clears throat> So would you say like, all right, getting into the shirts in, in as itself, what is, what is kind of like, are there certain bands that are like really sought after, like out of the big four, like which, which one of those like vintage tees, is it, is it simply like, like the tour shirts or is it certain things that like, is it a certain date, like tours, those you know are, that are like limited amount that are made or what do you, what do you, yeah, it, where's that it fluctuates, it fluctuates, it fluctuates so much. Well, not not that it fluctuates it's just it's different um yeah you know nirvana i would say i mean alice yeah. in chains those tees are really rare because you know lane was never really clean they don't really have a whole lot of tours you know they've got the right. main one with screaming trees they did they went to europe you know they've got like the main one with van halen 91 mm -hmm. um like that kind of stuff like you know if you look at a smashing pumpkin shirt from like 93 94 let's say like i mean dude that that tour is like it's like this big, it's the whole back of the shirt. Yeah. You know? Like right. that's so much merch kind of accrued. So those Every shirts, those shirts, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, you got to think that's so much merch accrued, you know what I mean? There's, there's so many of those out there, but they still hold that top dollar. So it really is just, uh, it's what people value it at. It really is. Like yeah. I, I could, I could have this shirt for sale and say that it paid hey, 150 bucks, but if nobody's going to pay for it, then that's not really, it's art. I'm just, lot. I'm just sitting here with this shirt, you know? Yeah. But, um, where it, where it kind of is now is, um, 
like I sell on lives a lot. Like I'll go on lives on my page and that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And then there's like the, it's called the virtual flea. It's actually happening in, uh, in Chicago. It's coming up this week. I think a lot of my friends are going out there. It's like, it's like a big meetup. Everybody comes out with, uh, you know, with like with shirts and all that. And they're, yeah. uh, a lot of people vend it. You can vend it or you can just kind of pull, do like I do. I'll pull up with a trade bag and just kind of hang out with friends and whatnot. But it's everybody that I mean, they collect from like rap tees to like, I mean, gr- uh, Grateful Dead, like whatever, this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I know, love that. High, high, like top dollar stuff that you just like won't see uh, based on rarity, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. But out of the big four, definitely Nirvana. Nirvana tees have been at an, at a, what I would consider like an unattainable price for, for the longest. You know, I that feel makes like, a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, a heart shaped box. I mean, that, that tea goes for, you know, three racks regularly. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You, yeah. you can put it up. You could, <laughs> yeah. And it'll sell, right? And it will sell. Yeah. It will sell. There's, there is somebody that is always looking for that tea in any condition, you know, whether it be like a really, really beat one with holes and blunt ash and whatever else on it, you know, <laughs> yeah, somebody or, put it through hell or, 30 years ago yeah, and then now me, it's going dude. That's, for, that's me. Like if you, you know, if you the best ones, me, right? Yeah. Best yeah. know that I've been ashing blunts on it and whatever else. <laughs> hundred yeah, percent. So. so one question that I have, um, you were born around the time, uh, you know, that all of these shirts and, and it's what it seems to be your focus area of like the late eighties, early nineties, give or take. And, and I don't know if it's confirmation bias or just based off of these are who my peers are, but it seems a lot of people who are into, you know, vintage pulling and buying and selling and trading are around your age, our age. What do you think it is about the, the early nineties, or I guess in this case, the grunge era that, why it's so powerful in terms of the nostalgia it has amongst people who were toddlers or weren't in my case, wasn't even alive during this time. Why, why do you think it has such a big pull? Um, I mean, it, it's, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of, we're, I'm in that weird generation where it's like, yeah, we had the internet, but we didn't have the internet. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I still was like, I was, I feel like me and people around like my age within like the you know five years or so or whatever we're still that generation of like you know getting kicked out of the house and like don't go back till the lights come on you yeah. know what i mean the porch light come on and dinner be ready that kind of thing so i you still kind of have that and um i don't know I, I just i got really nostalgic i lost a storage unit when i was young and uh lost a bunch of stuff like lost a, a bunch of my things and so from that point on i just had it in my mind oh i never want to experience this again so i just would always kind of like hoard things be it like i don't know you know i mean i was skateboarding a lot of the time so it'd be like old skate decks like i would just yeah. grab old skate decks and i was like what are you gonna do with these and i just had dude like a bunch of skate decks or like you know shoes or just like <clears throat> stickers any anything i just became like a pack rat for whatever was interesting at the time and um yeah it's like shirts i mean shirts are just so I don't know. I mean, I I, I was going to say, uh, obviously, shirts are super collectible. Um, do you have Do you have a like? I know posters for like the the dead and fish. Like that stuff is extremely because same thing. I yeah. mean, I know that my cousin. He's a huge fish fan, and he has. They played in in Philly one time, and they they made this awesome poster about the Schuylkill River, and it's you know. It sells for local to that know, area. That's really yeah, lo- cool. local to that area, and they and w- within the art, you know, they put in a lot of, you know, landmarks Gems. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah and stuff that yeah. people and they people love that stuff. Um, have you got much into the poster? Because I feel like that stuff is yeah. super collectible. Yeah. People I, who don't miss a show or like when they go to shows, they they don't miss buying a poster. They gotta it's, get the poster. You yeah. gotta get have the poster. To. Have to. Yep. 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 Have to. Um. Yeah, I've got. A, I've actually have a lot of a lot of rare posters. I have a bunch of Alice in Chains posters, and um, I've got Smashing Pumpkins. I've got Jesus Lizard. Just a bunch of a bunch of those types of bands in that era. But um, do you search for them, or do you when you buy them? Do you like, I do. You, do I you do, resell yes, them too? Uh, not really. Kind of for you, just for you, huh? <laughs> I kind of I kind of just hoard them. Yeah, I love that, dude. I uh, love that. That's got to be but, a difficult thing, though, because with you, it was born out of a passion that you had for the era and the music. And then so you accrue all of these things because it's a passion of yours and you're really interested. in it. And then somewhere along the line, you're like, well, shit, this stuff's worth a lot of money. And so you, everybody's probably like, oh, dude, you should you should sell this. But because it's important yeah. and it's special to you, it's got to be really difficult to pick and choose like which ones you want to part with or uh yep. you know how much you you want to you're willing to part parts with something for or different things like that 
I've got, for instance, a bad motor finger all over print shirt that I will oh, never, I, ba- I, I barely, I barely post it. So I don't want yeah. people to know that I have it. Because that's be the like, thing, as soon as you post shake, it, you're probably shaking your me down for yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. How yeah. much will it cost? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I uh, you know, like that, that was like a deeply nostalgic shirt for me yeah. because it was one, it's so hard to find. And it's like, I don't know, that record just means so much to me. As soon yeah. as I saw it, just like Rusty Cage, full blast in my head. I'm like, Mm-hmm. You know? it's like, yeah, this one's ne- this one's never leaving my grasp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of teas like that. So I mean, really, what it is um, is uh, basically uh, I have it like I have it as like kind of tiers. You know, like I'll have um, you know a thirty thirty to fifty dollar shirt. Let's say I'll find at the bins or something like that, or just wherever out thrifting, and that'll kind of keep me on the road and whatever until I can find something else. Uh, yeah. And like, it really is just like, uh, I mean, just constantly moving, constantly moving pieces, yeah. whether it's, you know, this for 20 bucks, 15, but you know, it, it just keeping the machine kind of going to get yeah. me to the point where I can, you know, go up and get, get those tapes and get that Santana shirt for free. That was like a really significant come up or like, yeah. I mean, I've stopped off at a yard sale and had this, I got 20 shirts off of this woman one time because she had, she had sap on CD. And then she had a bunch of Faith No More tapes. And I was like, what are the odds? She had all this cool music and no yeah. shirts. So I went back and talked to her. And God, we talked about life for like 45 minutes. And it was just so awesome. I was like, you know, hey, do you have any band shirts? She's like, yeah, I'll look and I'll look and see. And I came back the next day and she had a grip of shirts for me. And it was, it was uh, at a really gnarly time in my life where I really like that. I don't know. You needed I, that I'm moment. Very much, I, so much so. And it was so significant. Um, those moments are really, really uh, few and far between. Definitely, I've never had anything like that happen again. But, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, at the time, it, it definitely was like some, some like you're where you need to be kind of stuff, you know. And that, that's really meaningful to me. So yeah, do you yeah. um yeah when you go to places and pe- do people come up and trade you a lot? Like I mean, or usually yeah. the oh, one yeah, offering, I, but people come up. Do you yeah, like oh, that more? Than, I mean, you probably like that more than I than love getting it. I love money. it. I love it. It's 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 more important to me. Um. Um, to get a shirt, you know, that I, my friend is, I've seen him wear like, you know, the last six times or whatever I've seen him or whatever, he's finally ready to get rid of it. Give me that. That's mine. You know, that, that <laughs> always make me think of, you know, that, that it's, it's, uh, right. Exactly. I don't know. I'm, I'm it's like a good tattoo in that way. Yeah. It's like yeah, a good exactly, tattoo with your friend. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. Time and place. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, for sure. How do you, when you, yeah, when you go out, so well, this is like a, I guess a double-edged, uh, two-pronged question, but <clears throat> Okay. So you got places like H and M and Paxson, everybody that makes that makes vintage teas, right? And it's kind of a fad. And yeah. so what? So kind of dipping into like what that means to one, like I mean, just the somebody that cares so much about it, but also um, how do you just how are you able to uh, correctly distinguish? Is it just by tag, or I mean, I obviously have a really good eye uh, for this stuff. Yeah. You just, just being, being around it, you can, I mean, I can, I can from across the room, you can tell I can from across the room, see someone's graphic on their (laughs) shirt and be like, Oh, sick. I bet you that's on one of three tags, like that kind of stuff where it's just like, Oh, okay. Like, you know, I've seen this so many times, like this faith and more shirt, for instance, like it's just a washed out white tag. People be like, you know, what was it or what could, it feels good. It's real. And you're like, I know it. I know exactly what the tag should say. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Even though though there's no words on it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, some, you know, someone could have this exact Slayer shirt on and then I could pretty well see from, from a distance, whether it's like a, an OG one or like, or if it's just like kind of a reprinted one. Yeah. And it, it sucks. I mean, it, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm all that for, was like you know, four or five years ago, or like, I think it was like, I like really got big where people were like, you know, see celebrities were wearing all these like yeah, Slayer yeah, shirts and yeah. stuff. Like totally. they were playing. Like, I was like, yeah, yeah. I saw Russell Westbrook like, you can get away a with Pearl Jam sweatshirt. Yeah, a you can get away with like wearing like a Nirvana or it, a Guns N' Roses because you know a few songs. But like Slayer, like these guys don't listen to Slayer. It, I, I guarantee it. It drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. I mean, um, like Travis Scott wore Travis Scott wore this. I've actually had this happen to me. I, I honestly would attribute it to the the Travis Scott effect. So I had this Aerosmith shirt, right? And it's from. Um, what was that album? Um, 2001, Just Press Play. And it was the girl. Yep. She's like the robot girl. With yeah, the yeah, on the cover of the album. Yep. Right, right. Okay, so I had no idea, but that's actually a really famous artist. Um, his name is Soriyama. Oh, and no so he, he did that album artwork or whatever. And um, I had that tea sitting on my $20 rack for maybe like like three different, three different pop-ups and no one sniffed it. 
Yeah. Suddenly, Kylie is wearing it, and he's wearing it, and I think it was like the documentary or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they did like that 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 uh that piece on him. Yeah. And I, I sold it for 150 bucks. So Damn. it's just like it, so it know, actually so it like, helped. It actually helped a little, a little notoriety it, in his. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 uh it's kind of crazy. Like I've seen that happen multiple times actually with different with different bands that I'm like what do these kids want a rush shirt for like you name me a song not tom sawyer like i'll wait <laughs> like, yeah, like, you know what i mean like mm-hmm. but i saw him i saw travis wearing it in that you know and i know i need it i don't know you know you walk by and compliment and then he'd probably be like rush this a band yeah like, yeah know, like, is this? i thought this kinda, was that kind yeah. of thing yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's, it's it's really interesting how that happens, and and I guess you know I wanted to know what your opinions are on people who uh, that's always the age old question that I know we've had a lot of discussions about on the page, and people are very opinionated about it. Um, whether whether or not songs. you can wear you can wear <laughs> merchandise or apparel from bands or whatever if you're not knowledgeable about them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what are your thoughts? You know, in the in the instance in the instance of like. You know, I don't know. It's just a cool faded shirt that I like and I'm wearing it. Like, yeah. leave me alone. I get, I totally, you know, I totally mm-hmm. get that for sure. Yeah. And I'm not that type of person that would be like, you know, right. I saw this chick and she was wearing this. You have no constitutional right trees. to wear that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, in my case, I would be like really nice to her and be like, hey, you want me to <laughs> sell me your sucker. Mark Lanigan shirt? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if someone's wearing not. a UFC shirt, you just want to fight them. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where, 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 where you fight? You like? Yeah, where yeah. would you like there's there's enough there's enough in this life to overthink you know yeah and, and mm-hmm. a, another thing that i was curious about is this has been a passion of yours for a long time and and i i guess particularly over the last five or six years social media but in particular instagram has just blown up like what do you what do you think the impacts of social media is on this community and do you think that it's something that's helpful just to be able to learn and to share and to develop that community or how, how does 100%. it impact the scene oh yeah um La... okay there's this guy named chris and he has mm-hmm. this page called 1980 something co yep. and it, it blew up over covid because he's he was the like the first person to really start like selling over lives got it and um i mean he had a genie shirt on there go for like six six grand or something Holy like that like, it was a, it was like a pretty big thing that happened wow. um so is it just like a li- person. live auction people are just like live auction I- just like this just like this and then i would hold the shirt up you know, this yeah. is, you know, Romstein shirt. If you're interested in it on a Delta tag and I'll give the info and Dude, any I'm flaws just... that are on it or anything Paying like that. 40 and bucks then, for uh, it. Ethan, you beat me. 50. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now people are just like, you know, whatever type and trying to, that's why trying to get, trying to get the shirt. So, um, that 100% and, and everything that it brings with it, you know, cause there's people like me that are, that are doing it now. And, um, it was really cool to go to an event. I went to an event in, in Arizona where I didn't, I didn't know a soul there, but then I got there and found out that, you know, everybody that, uh, everybody that I've been talking to on Instagram, all my best friends were there. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's so it's super pretty, cool. it's pretty sick. It's pretty sick to finally put in, put a face to, um, to everybody. So like, yeah. I mean, I have friends from like Canada from all over that do this yep. and it's a, uh, it's, it's a really cool <laughs> it's um, its own community thing that brings us together. Yeah. Yeah. Really it's awesome. its own community. Yeah. It, it, that is really cool. And Ethan, like that's, that's the same thing that, that this page and this podcast oh, yeah. is. I oh, mean, yeah. we've, we've made friends with, I mean, fuck, like we're sitting here with you, Nick, like, yeah. and, and yeah. it's just this common passion and this common interest. And, and I think that's the Ed coolest Ventel, thing I'm social dead, media baby. is for. That's yeah. right. <laughs> there we go. Absolutely. But yeah, it's, it's, it, I think it's super cool. It's such a great tool just to develop those connections and those relationships. And, I mean, to score some, score some cool shit too. Yeah. Yeah. My, my number one is, um, even over shirts is, is VHSs though. I, oh, I yeah. hoard and collect VHSs. Yeah. If at all I can find, um, like music bootlegs, those mm-hmm. are like, Oh, that's gotta be unbelievable to, to find something oh, dude, that's I, super cool. I found one, I found one that was like, it, it's like a relic. It's like the, it's like the equivalent to an Instagram story would be nowadays. Like, you, the, the video starts and it's like them goofing off fucking around in the kitchen and then they're you know, getting in the car and getting everything loaded and uh like one Who of them got it? their ass hanging out the window these ki- these people i don't know they're on their way to the <laughs> concert 
So that's they awesome. Them the whole way down. I you thought know, it was a band. I love that. It's like a snap no, story. No, no, it's no. an Insta story. It's somebody no, else's it's home video. Home video bootleg <laughs> of it's. I think it's. I think it's like a. It's a. I think it was like a Mega Megadeth Slayer. That's it would have so been that, that 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 tour yet. Um, yeah. It's like Megadeth Slayer, like Anthrax, whatever. And it was like had a the big home video recording thing. How <laughs> rare is it to someone have had that and be doing cool shit with it? Yeah, that's like so hanging cool. your ass out the window and recording yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> yeah, I was, just, I was gonna say I'm always surprised when you see the home videos. Like uh, Steve-O would so cool. record everything he did, but like the old videos where people had the the uh, the whereabouts to record cool stuff like that. Mm-hmm. True, because like now it's easy. Everybody has their phone different Everybody's ways. Everybody's got phones. one. But yeah. that's what that's what makes the old videos so special. It's like how did they know to like do the behind the scenes stuff like. Oh my gosh, it's yeah. so so cool. And this makes yeah. me think of um on on YouTube there's this one video in particular. There's a lot of them now at this point, but um there's this one video that went super viral a couple of years ago. It was some some high school kid who took a video a, a camera to to school on his last day of high school in like 1991 and he was just going around talking to people just like shooting the shit about life and whatever and just like showing what it was about and like the video popped off and everyone's like holy shit like this is exactly like what my eyes what my years were like back then it's it's like that weird intersection of like something's rare and it's just the the nostalgia that it has and it's just it's fucking cool man well it's not and it's not you but you just picture yourself yeah like in there it feels like you it it could be you yeah picture me rolling uh, yeah. Have you ever seen American Beauty? Like the the kid that's what has like the video camera, like with the camcorder thing he has to unfold. Have you seen that? Uh, I haven't. No. American, American Beauty. American Beauty with Kevin Spacey. Watch it. It's a it's a bizarre movie. Yeah. Um, but he's like he's like just he's like the weird kid with the beanie on and like his shirt buttoned up and he's like holding the camera and it's just like someone someone was the weirdo you know filming yep. filming all of this stuff to like high eight you know mm-hmm. and I'm. I'm I'm the weirdo that bought it at a thrift store and I'm watching it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty rad. It just comes full circle. That's, That's so crazy. So yeah. one, one more question that I have for you, um, yeah. your, your, your collection is pretty expansive. Is there any, great white buffalo that you have that's out there? The Holy grail that you want to get your hands on. Is there the, like one particular piece that above yeah, all else, man. if you could grab, like it's something that you'd yeah. want to have a part of your collection the the white the white dirt tea uh-huh oh, i'm sorry i lost your book <laughs> yes. uh, the, yeah, we'll the, the white, white the white dirt tea yeah with it it says dirt on the back and it has uh it's like the whole promo in the sun and everything on the on the front hit it has the mm-hmm. sleeves and everything um jerry lorenzo which was he like his design for fear of god's his brand but he's designed for like kanye and all that kind of stuff okay um he oh, yeah. he's he's responsible for that price mark where it's like you can't get one for under like sixteen hundred dollars i was gonna say like Holy what's this cow. thing going yeah, it's, for it's 1600? way up there yeah. the, it's, I think, it's way up there yeah this one says used and it's yeah, it's like 15 so it's it's oh that's yeah. fucking cool like the yeah yep. Damn, yeah you can pretty pull, yeah, pull that bad boy up on ebay and find the back a, that's a says huge, huge yeah. dirt I am tattooing that on my body forever. That's like that daily so day. sick. Eight eight days a week over here at Faded Trade <laughs> LLC. That is so cool. Hey, Fifteen hundred dollars. Like yeah. A lot of it. It's like um, what I would assume back in the day, like a fisherman has a good fishing story. Like if you ever get close to getting that's, one and it just me. doesn't that's work me. out, I'm, or I'm you're, constantly you're just, casting yeah. that line all the time, and it's yeah. like you pull something, you're like, 100%. oh shit, could this be it? And and turns out that it's not it. But I mean, that's probably a lot of what, what keeps you going out the door and looking for stuff. It really is, honestly. It's it's um someone could tell me like, Oh, my dad has a bunch of old band shirts and like instantly like mom <laughs> yeah, I gotta get what, there. What what, what was the into? Like, yeah, what, like, was what was the kind into? of bands does he like? You <laughs> yeah. know, like let's see. What's, what's his age? What's his, <laughs> How old what's his deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He likes he likes where his, did, yeah. Yeah, where does he grow up? <laughs> Who's his favorite guitar player? Kirk Cobain. Yeah, nice. yeah some nice. some Kirk guy. I don't know. He had long hair. <laughs> okay. He was always grumpy. Kirk? Nice. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, uh, another one. Do you think so? Where do you think this will be in twenty fifty? So flash forward thirty years. Do you think that thirty years from now? From now, yeah. So mm. I guess the question is like, will these shirts like? Well, okay. My original question is, 
what bands now are going to have the t-shirts that we want in 30 years? Like, who's uh-huh. going to have, like, are we thinking, like, the, you know, Dead & Company and Mayer are going to have, like, some really badass shirts that we want? You know or, like, what I'm saying? Or you think some it's going to be, like, house. Beach House? Beach House. Hell some yeah. random, like, you know. Do you think, like, pop rock, I love like, the- or alt rock, like, stuff like that? Or- yeah, Beach House for sure. Sick, I, yeah. I think that, um, I mean, obviously, I mean, there's, there's bands Malone. that people love that are, he post, you know, I, and he probably has some cool. With, I don't know his tees, but you know what? Watching people post, uh, watching people poach, um, you know, the, the tragic death of Kobe, and like now their jerseys are like, yeah, you know, five hundred dollars, yeah. two hundred. Who who could even know what's going to happen with with anything, right? Um, as far as like markets and that kind of stuff goes, yeah. But um, as far as bands, I think that will be popular like who has- in the future. Yeah, like who has really like who, sick tees right now, or do they all pretty much have like? It's all. I mean, it's all. Um, it's all about like. It's all about kind of the same. They're all yeah. like screen printed about the same. Like they're all just on. I wish that there would be a band that would like. Hey, we have. Hey, we had like ten people pick nothing but vintage blanks for a month. Right. Right. And now we're gonna do this very limited run. Of that would be cool. Faded, faded yeah. black tees that are all that are all on good you know good tags right. real real old yep. like that's what i mean action, i feel like people you know, everybody, don't everybody wants to yeah people they, don't really they, have the quality of t-shirts that's what i was try, like thinking about and it's like obviously well, they, so they can produce a ton more right uh, they, well they, you know they want to say recycled or whatever it's made from recycled cotton well that would be the literally recycled you know you'd be pulling it from the trash can from where it was mm-hmm. and washing it and making it a new and giving it that faded shirt a new life you know like i would i would love to see people start kind of doing that because i have friends that i have friends that work that go and work the bins every single day and they'll you know they're selling tees they're selling tees for 20 30 40 50 80 and the people that are buying those are then taking them to other places and bigger pages and it just kind of stacks up a little bit where it's like you know that may have been a 200 dollars shirt but they're my friend at the bins took the 50 to just kind of yeah. get by so it would be nice to see like you know bigger companies and stuff like if, if a company were to do that you know like hey we bought this bale of clothes and we're going to pull every faded black tee out of it and we're going to print all of our stuff on there and there's only going to be a limited 50, uh, a number run of like a hundred of these right so it's like it's on a vintage shirt it's printed nice it's good it's like a sick graphic or something like that I, that would go off you know as opposed yeah. to just like hey Hey, it's just another like Bangladesh, like Zara shirt, whatever kind of thing <laughs> mm-hmm. that we're just going to put a logo on, which is fine. But it just, yep. you know, I don't know. It's, it's, I feel like it would be a little bit different if it was, if it was all on like, you know, sourced, sourced items and like sourced uh, shirts and stuff like that. That's super cool. Ethan, we need to do a limited run of Grunge Bible t shirts. Should, man. Let's should. get in the bins. We got to exactly. go on the hunt, Ethan. I, I, I'll get you. I'll get you guys some faded black tees, and you guys yeah. can you guys can do your worst. We'll Dude, to I, I love it. I love it. We need to, that's that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Really awesome. some, so so some Nick, where can you like? Yeah. Oh, where can they find me? Yeah, where can where can people find you if they're if they're interested uh, in uh, buying, selling, or trading? Yeah, just my. We're just looking too. I, I mean, I, I look. I, it's always crazy to see the shit that's on uh, the, the the you pop up. You never know what's going to be on there. That's all I do. Honestly, I'm a I'm a fan first. I'm a fan first of the music yeah, and of tees. Like cool. I'm a psychotic collector myself, so I just I'm always always looking. If I don't want it, maybe somebody else will. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, my Instagram faded trade, all one word. At faded trade, so, there he is. Well, faded trade, Mister oh, yeah. Mr. Nick Grumbaugh. <clears throat> Absolutely, it's, yeah. it's been a pleasure. Yeah, last, thank you so last, much for having me, guys. I was gonna say, last question before you go. What was the last thing that was in your ears? What were you listening to? Tell the people, <laughs> band and song, if you can. Oh, band and song. I just got, um, I just got Houdini live by the Melvins with uh, Tre- with Trevor Dunn from Mr. Bungle playing bass, and it's unreal. Oh, I, was to, I was, I was listening to Hooch. Nice so, on the cassette. Turn, no. <laughs> no, no, on a on a CD. On a Hell CD. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in my gas. car. Is hooch. Get that one. Hooch. That riff, that riff lives rent free in my head. It's an amazing. Twenty four seven Utilities yeah. included. <laughs> all that. All that. Well, thank that you is, boys for letting me uh, be a part of this. Absolutely, yeah, man, man, we are we're we're happy to have you on. Um, I'm sure we'll do this again, and we'll definitely do like a little collab. Do maybe we'll do a live, and we'll get in there while you're selling some stuff. So thank yeah. you. Yeah.
I'd love that. See you guys. Hell yeah. See ya. All right, there you have it. An awesome 30 minutes, 35 minutes with a good friend, Nick. Uh, hopefully that was exactly what you needed to hear about um, different records and t-shirts. Um, I think it's awesome. I think it's so badass. Yeah, it's like, a cool passion. And there's, yeah. a, there's a really cool community around it. I mean, it's a similar thing as to, as to our page. You know, there's people that are passionate and they gather yeah. and they share stories and they're all after yeah. the same things. Yeah, they pop on. I'll see he goes live a lot with other people and they do auctions and stuff. It makes me, I've, I've already told him a few times, I want to I wanna get some shirts so I can trade him. I need to like, I need to get into the game a little bit and start trading yeah. some threads. I think it's, I think it's so cool. Pretty cool. Get so some I gotta, skin in the game. I got to get out there. Yep. I got to get out there and start looking, start picking. Yeah. Finding. I agree. So uh, to anyone who's out there who's interested, uh, as we said before, his uh, handle on Instagram is at faded trade. So you can go ahead and check him out there. But, uh, Overall, a, a quality conversation with a quality person that uh, we're very happy to know and, and have as a friend. Yeah, we'll have him on again. I think I, I think we just get, we're getting the uh, getting the jitters out for the first one. The only time we'll come on because he's got a lot of good music takes and stuff. Yeah, so totally. he's well he's well listened. You can tell. Yes. Yeah. He, he you absolutely can tell. is, and that's and that's, we he, appreciate he can have conversations that forever with people like yeah. that, which is which is what we do here. Um, yeah, and that's really awesome. So. Uh, to everyone who's still with us, thank you so much for listening. Uh, we'd like to thank you for your time and uh, for your support uh, in any fashion that that might be. We would also like to thank our producer, Drew McFadden, uh, for continuing to kick ass uh, with this project. He's been with us since uh, before step one, really. And um, we're very, very grateful to have him in our corner. Yeah, he's doing a great job putting up with us. and Yeah. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah. Um, so before we close up shop, Ethan, I think uh, song of the week, we'll, we'll, we'll have another entry into the, uh, the great playlist in the sky. That's right. I'll go first this week. Right. Um, this was a, this was a song that I used. So when I, when I cook, I always put music on. Oh yeah. Um, and it's, and yeah, and depending, it kind of stays in the same vein. Like I like instrumental. I, I don't like, but yeah, I like instrumental and I like kind of jam band and, and usually like acoustic guitar or an yeah. electric guitar, but pretty like mellow background stuff. I do like Tame Impala, that type of kind of um, electronic yeah. setup too. But <clears throat> this is um, in the realm of, of jam bands and it's actually an Umphreys McGee song titled October Rain. And uh, it has a really nice jam. It's just a really solid musically put together song and i just was i like listened to it last night it came on and i was starting nodding my head and it was just such a good like it's something that you can you can listen to and appreciate and you have a conversation over top of it and then all of a sudden you hear something and you, you kind of like go in and out of the song uh, really well really easy to kind of like yeah just really easy to, to, to digest while doing other things so that's great yeah yeah it's music, a good music one like that that serves that purpose <clears throat> is so important it is important i think it's undervalued too i feel like yeah. i i like putting putting it on putting music on in the background for like everything yeah i agree i'm I'm the same way like if i'm if i'm awake even sometimes if i'm asleep <laughs> i got the music going uh you, you really have to it's funny for for cooking i i have a tradition where on the weekends i'll i'll, I'll get up sometimes i'll make more of a, a proper breakfast than just the quick eggs that i normally do and uh i i, I love the concept of the sunday blues you know you, you hit some old blues uh, mm -hmm. the electric blues some of the old older guys and you just have a good time make some good breakfast and sit down and you're on nobody's time but your own and those yeah. are always uh always some good moments yeah heck yeah so uh do you have a sunday blues entry for this week <laughs> I, I do not have a sunday blues <laughs> entry actually so i'm i'm really torn um with my song of the week selection because as we said there have been so many things that I, we've been listening to and that we've been very passionate about lately so uh, it was hard to select which bucket, uh, uh, you know, I would I would reach into for this song of the week. But right before we hopped on, actually, I was listening to this artist, and uh, once again, I have another entry from Mark Lanigan. This is from his uh, 2004 Bubblegum record, which um, I think many consider to be one of his best solo works. Um, and the song is called Head, um, and I I listened to Bubblegum for the first time several years ago. I don't think I really understood it. I don't think I got it because I was expecting it to be, I was expecting Mark to be 
the singer from the screaming trees and his solo work is so much better than the fucking trees man um <laughs> and bubblegum is just so good it sounds different it challenges you um and it's th- this song i forgot how much i liked it um and i heard it this morning uh when i was working and it's got to be my song of the week it's just a really really great uh composition and a really great song from a really really great art creator um singer songwriter writer poet uh, who I've been listening to and consuming his work a lot. Uh, and yeah, it still, still sucks that he's not here, but man, we, we got a lot of music and I'm still just mm-hmm. scratching the surface, but yeah, that's my song of the week, uh, head by Mark Lanigan. Awesome. I just added those two to the playlist. That's great. Um, some diversity, some more, some more bangers added to the list. It's so good. That's um, all we do, Ethan. We just put them out, line them up and knock them down. That's exactly what we did today. Um, so again, thank you everybody that's here. If you're listening, go out and uh, like, subscribe because uh, we are legally obligated to ask you to do those types of things to support you us. Do so it. yeah, you so to. call to action. Um, go, just choose if you have a dartboard or if you want to do the wheel of names and just put like like, subscribe, Patreon, all that, and then spin it and then do whatever it says. There's an idea. Um, yeah. So, uh, but that would be great. But if not, no problem. We'll ask you again next week. So. Thanks for listening, everybody. Take care of yourselves, and uh, we'll catch up with you next week. Yep. Have a great week, guys. Talk to you later. Rock and roll. What's your favorite type of drunk? What's what's your favorite? What's your favorite time to get drunk? Like if you had like a perfect scenario, and I know this is putting you on the spot, so maybe you'll you'll re- you'll probably respond when I say mine. Like when is the most optimal time to get drunk? The most fun time to 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 get drunk or to be drunk? T- to get drunk. Oh, so man. like the process I'm, of getting drunk, I think. Like is it Friday afternoon? I, is it a I holiday? Love, I love afternoons when the weather's kind of warm, oh, particularly yeah. like. A, yeah, ideally, a little sneaky, like you're still on the clock. A, fri- a Friday or a Saturday afternoon, because Monday is so far away that it doesn't matter. Like yeah. you, you could talk me into doing anything. You could talk me into staying up as late as as late as you want. Um, I, I'd say for me, it's like Friday or Saturday afternoon. I, yeah. I do like Sundays too, because like Sundays, like once once you start, once you get a little in you, like you reach that point, you're like fuck it, like Monday's not today. Monday's tomorrow. I don't, I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sun- you, Sunday you, you Fundies. Eat a bunch of weed butter. <laughs> Yeah. Sunday fun is like 50 50 because you're like 50% of the time you're going to be like, I'm out after a few beers. And 50% of the time you take it to the next level. Yeah. But Friday afternoon, like, yeah, like if you can cut out, cut out of work and still be getting paid for like two hours, that's a really good beer. Oh, yeah. Uh, airport, getting drunk at the airport is I love fun. Airports. But, I also love like the first one when like the boys get back together. Like that's yeah. a really good, that's a really good beer. So my, my absolute favorite time to get drunk is we did it at Mardi Gras. And it's where you go out Friday night and you get really hammered and then you wake up and you know you have a full day of drinking and you're super hungover, but tomorrow's still Sunday. So Monday's still two days away. So, yeah. so you're like super hungover. You literally and get you're to slap go to happy. sleep and you get the next night. <laughs> so then you wake up and you're only like, you know that your only chore that day is, is to have a good time and to, yeah, to drink. So you're hungover and you just get to be drunk at 10 a.m. and then start it all over. Dude, I, you cannot beat that. If you're with the right group of people, like, you know, if you're just yeah, like by yeah. yourself. No, I, I totally agree. <laughs> um, and, and the best the best ones, too, are when it's not um, it's not totally defined that that's what you're going to do. And then someone's like, yeah, I'm going to have a beer. And it's like 1030 in the morning. And you're like, all right, here we go. Makes me want to do it right now. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. God, me too. But it's only fuck, it's Wednesday. Yes. Yeah, something. <laughs> Damn, but you're you like- you have one like more Friday. day left Today's for the Thursday week. for me, basically. Yeah, I got yeah. one more day tomorrow. All right. Well, I think the tape is just about finishing up. The interview's, you know, wrapping up. So yeah. we're about to come back in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, do we need to do Song of the Week again?